Welcome good people, my name is Joel Collier and today we're going to talk about how to test uh, with categorical variables and looking at direct effects and even in testing mediation. So one of the fundamental assumptions of SIM is that uh, you have continuous variables. But there's a caveat there, so it's really continuous variables with your dependent variables. So your independent variables uh, can be categorical, can be can continuous, your moderators can be uh, categorical or continuous, but if it's a dependent variable, uh, it, it has to be continuous in a sim model. So I think sometimes there's a, a real kind of oversimplification and just kind of dismissing sim and saying, well, I got categorical variables, so I can't use sim. Like, no. Uh, if it's an independent variable, you can definitely use sim, and sometimes it's more appropriate to use sim with categorical variables. Uh, even from an experimental design perspective, because oftentimes experimental design models are set up where the manipulation itself is an, an IV, an independent variable, that is influencing some other kind of dependent variables. And it's more than appropriate to do that in in sim. So I guess the issue too is, is, well, how do I do this since I don't really have a continuous variable? Now I have categories. And how does that influence kind of these subsequent kind of constructs? So let's kind of tackle how to do that. So I got a simple model here. Um, it was a model from a restaurant setting, which was, did the server adapt their behavior to you uh, or did they not adapt their behavior? So it was either kind of a yes or no. Uh, did they adapt or did they not adapt? So it was binary uh, and we coded the, the ones who said yes, they adapted their behavior as a one. Those that said no, they didn't adapt their behavior to us as a zero. So it was categorical as one zero. And then we wanted to see, did it influence um, this continuous variable of delight, which was well, how delighted were you from the experience that you had? And then ultimately, did that lead to kind of positive word of mouth? And we were looking at the direct effect uh, here too, but we were really kind of concerned about the indirect effect kind of going through delight to this positive word of mouth. Well, how do I test that? You know, with again, it's a categorical uh, variable. Now, one of the things that you, you do need to kind of note in here when you're talking about mediation or testing mediation or even examining indirect effects when there is a categorical variable is that it is really cons considered a relative indirect effect. So, when you're even writing that up, you probably really need to phrase it as a relative indirect effect because, again, it's categories that are showing that influence through a mediator to the DV. And so, from those different categories, it's probably more appropriate to term it not just indirect effects, but the relative indirect effects through that categorical independent variable. So, if we have this model and we want to test it through, um, uh, through AMOS and the indirect effects, First thing we need to do is to kind of set up a bootstrap. So um, that's the most appropriate way to actually test mediation. I've got some previous videos too on how to test mediation. It goes into a lot of detail of why bootstrapping. But we're going to perform a bootstrap and we're going to have about 5,000 samples. Uh, then we're going to do a bias corrected confidence interval and we're usually concerned with an 05 significance. So we're going to change that to 95. And then we're going to run our uh, run our model. So when we get into the uh, the output here, it's going to uh, give us the estimates. And so in the estimates, you can see like the binary adapt to delight uh, was significant with a t value of 12.52, and the estimate was positive, and it was a 0 0.820. So let's talk a little bit about what that means from a categorical perspective. So all the um, instances where the employee adapted their behavior was coded as a one. Um, and and the, the other ones were a zero. So in your estimates, if your uh, regression estimate comes out as a positive, that means that the effect was stronger with those that were coded as a one as opposed to zero. Now, if that binary adapted to light was negative, it was negative 0.820, that's saying that the categories that were coded as a zero had a stronger effect than the ones that were coded as a one. So in this instance, those who adapted their behavior had a significantly uh, stronger effect on customer delight perceptions. 
and then you can see delight had an influence to positive word of mouth and our direct effect coming to word of mouth from those adapt versus non adapt was non significant. A T of 1.4, our P is uh, 0.15. So right now we have the possibility of looking at having full mediation if it comes out, but it won't be partial mediation because the direct effect was non significant. So there is a possibility for full mediation. Well, what is this 0 0.820? Like, where did this come from, and what does it mean? Because, again, it's categories. So to clarify this, what I've done is I ran a, uh, a simple ANOVA across customer delight, across the two categories of they adapted it or they didn't adapt. And if you see the uh, means here, the mean uh, of the non-adapt category for delight was a 5.7. Three. This is on a 1 to 7 scale. And then those that adapted their behavior, the mean for delight was 6.55. Well, if you take the 6.55 and you subtract it from the 5.734, then that gets you your 0.820. So this value over here is really just the difference between means across the categories. So from an interpretation standpoint, when you're kind of talking about that and understanding like where does this number come from and what does it mean, it's really the differences of those categories in regards to, in this instance, delight. And then the difference was greater in the positive, so focusing more on the ones, to a significant level, which means it had a stronger effect than the non-adapt group did. So just for kind of clarity, that's kind of where this, these numbers are kind of coming from and what they mean. So if we wanted to look at the indirect effects, um, we're going to go into the estimates and go down to uh, matrices and look at the indirect effects. Now again, this is something you have to ask for in the output. It will not automatically just give you indirect effects. So usually what you're going to do is after your um, getting the bootstraps and selecting that and doing your bias confidence intervals you'll go into the output uh, at the top and then just select indirect effects. So here in the indirect effects you can see that the indirect effect from adapt to word of mouth was 0.493. Okay so that's the indirect effect but I want to see if it's significant so I'm going to come down here to where it says bootstrap confidence intervals and see, all right, the lower bound was 0.357, the upper bound was 0.646, so that does not cross over zero. Um, and so our, our uh, significance here of our indirect effect is significant at less than 0.001. So in this instance, we have full mediation that has taken place because, again, our indirect effect uh, is uh, that. Uh, point, uh, 0.493 and it falls within our confidence interval that does not cross zero and it's significant. So saying that now from an interpretation standpoint we can say well the ability to either those that either adapt or didn't adapt has a relative you know indirect effect through to light to positive word of mouth uh, and that indirect effect is significant at a 0 0.001 level. And so that's, you know, kind of a, a simple way to kind of understand how to interpret kind of categorical variables and how to run a simple category mediation test as well. If you're looking for more information about how to run SIM analysis with categorical variables or more information on mediation or even kind of more complicated ones such as moderated mediation with categorical variables or even if I have multiple categories what if I don't have just one or two but what if I've got like three or more how do I do it that way there's more information in my book that goes into detail applied structural collision modeling using Amos um, that is really set up as more kind of a step-by-step -step then getting lost in the minutia of the mathematics of it is more just, well, how do I do it from a researcher's perspective? Uh, but that's all I've got for y'all uh, this week. I hope y'all have a great day uh, and be safe, good people.